Well, speaking of big farm boys, ESPN.com is going to run a front page article about Brock Lesnar here in uh, late June. And they're talking all about, you know, what his possibilities are of making an NFL team. And they get a quote from Scott Studwell, the personnel director of the Vikings. This is the team that Brock said he wanted to play for the most because of the proximity to his daughter. He'd have more time at home with her. And he, here's what Scott said. As much as you'd like to take a shot on a guy like him because of his athletic history, do you do it at the expense of cutting another player? Probably not. At the expense of taking away reps from a promising young player? Probably not. With Brock, it's like you're starting from scratch, and he would say Lesnar's chances of making a roster are less than 50%. And they're interviewing Lesnar about his interest in pursuing football, and he says something like, I saw older wrestlers like Flair and Undertaker and how much they missed their families. And I didn't want to wind up like them. Plus I didn't like the direction my character was going and I couldn't ever get straight answers out of Vince. And they say that he blew up and quit after the South American tour quote. I think Vince thought I'd change my mind and come back, but it wasn't going to happen. And of course this all comes off like an absolute asshole is the way it reads. If you're in the wrestling business. Do you remember this article and coverage and, uh, did it change any opinions in the WWE at the time? Yeah, I don't, I don't remember the article at all, but I think that overall the general opinion was one of, you know, Brock thinks grass is greener on the other side. Let him go, go out and find out what it is out there. Right. I don't, you know, it just, that was what it was. I think that was a constant narrative throughout the entire thing. And, those that, that knew and liked Brock, you know, we were rooting for him. We were, you know, hey man, this is what you want to do. They're they're always going to come back to WWF superstar. If he made it, that would have been great for everybody. And if he didn't, well, maybe he'll come back. WWE recently had an interview with a well-respected soap opera writer about joining the team for a supposed $200,000 a year role, doing among other things, keeping storyline continuity. It was the role that movie writer, Paul Gway, a lifelong fan who wrote Liar, Paul Gay. Liar. Paul Gay. Okay. Yeah. So he's pronounced gay. Talk to me a little bit about Paul Gay. I mean, I didn't realize that the guy who wrote Liar Liar was actually a lifelong wrestling fan and had a cup of coffee with the WWE. What can you tell us about him? I think Paul lasted uh, four weeks, maybe five weeks. Didn't last long. Didn't last long at all. Uh, Couldn't hang. You know, it was like, wait, you guys do this every week? Um, You know, he, and it's funny coming from a, and I don't, I I, honestly, man, uh, you said you did liar, liar. I think I vaguely remember that. I remember he had all these credentials and all this other crap, but the credentials were for being able to, you know, write one two hour movie or 90 minute movie and having months upon months upon months to write one, let's call it two hours, one, two hour feature. And that's his credit. Okay. You hear the soap opera side of things. That's different, man. That's creating every single day and, and writing a soap opera, man. That's, that's every day, an hour, every day, you know, that that's tough to do. And I just think he was exposed from the standpoint of all of a sudden, wait, you guys got to do two hours every week, all brand new and, and go on. He couldn't hang. He couldn't hang. I, I don't know that I ever even met him in person. I listened to him on the, the conference calls and things like that. Um, and, and thought, you know, this guy's so out of touch. Um, I, I, you're going to say, Oh, I didn't like him. No, I didn't know him. I didn't, I didn't like him, dislike him or anything. I, I didn't know him. I heard him on the other side of calls and I, I thought to myself like, wow, uh, ew, this isn't going to, this isn't going to last. And it was the gorilla monsoon in me kicked in to where don't commit this name to memory. Oh, wow. Um, and sure enough, man, he left in the middle of a show and was like, I just can't do this anymore. And just left. 
So, you know, it's um, he gone. There you go. He gone. Uh, here's a, a story that I had never heard before. I wanted to share with you. The agents continue to do some double crossing of sorts on the June 20th, Fort Myers house show. Val Venus got in the ring for a match with Tyson Tomko. Instead, Palumbo was sent to the ring and was told he was going over and they had to work the entire match out on the fly. The reason this is being done is to get guys used to working old style without, without playing spots. I love hearing that. I didn't know that. What can you tell us about this? It is a way to teach young people. It's way it's a way to teach someone how to feel and not go in with preconceived. Okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do this, and then this comes after that. And then that comes after this, and we're going to do this, and then we're going to wait there. And this will get a big pop, even though when you do it, it doesn't. You don't know what to do because you were told in your head that this is going to get a big pop, and you don't know what to do. So go out there not knowing what you're going to do and feel it, and feel what the audience is doing at the time and and take the audience on a ride and your match depends on what curves and what dips and what climbs that you have in that match because the match is like a roller coaster and you want to take people on a ride you want to take them up you want to bring them down you want to bring them around and up and then go for the big climax and boom take it home so that's what you know this was and in live events it's a place to do it and it's a learning tool live events are the place to do it there were only 2600 fans uh, in the crowd that night uh, when you ran buffalo there were 3000 fans you ran msg with just 8600 fans salisbury uh, maryland only drew 2200 raw tv in richmond did 5000 uh, SmackDown and Winston Salem only did 2000 SmackDown TV and Fayetteville did 3,700. I mean, this sounds like a struggling promotion, but you're still making money in 2004. So that goes to show you even 20 years ago, it wasn't all about live, live event attendance, but you compare those numbers back then to the numbers WWE is doing now. It's a totally new ballpark. Is it not? I mean, it's That's a completely a, different business now. Yes, it is. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson here to tell you a little more about what adfreeshows.com is all about. Get early ad-free access to more than a dozen of your favorite wrestling podcasts every single week, starting at just nine bucks. That's less than 20 cents an episode each month. And yes, you can listen to them all directly through Apple podcasts or your regular podcast apps. How easy is that? Ad-Free Shows also has thousands of hours worth of bonus content and docu-series like Title Chase, Eric Fires Back, Conversations with Conrad, and The Insiders, plus new series like The Book with David Crockett, Monday Mailbags with Mike Chioda and Nick Patrick, and a whole lot more. And you want to talk about early, you can't get any earlier than listening to the shows live. You can be a part of the live studio audience as we record the podcast. Plus, ride shotgun alongside your favorite childhood heroes for live watch-alongs, Q&As, and other interactive experiences every single month. Come on now, see for yourself what thousands of other wrestling fans from around the world have discovered that adfreeshows.com is the best value in wrestling. Check it out today, and hey, when you do, the first week is completely free, adfreeshows.com. <laughs> 